I've had a few people asking me about Octoprint in the Snapmaker Facebook group, so I thought I'd do a video today on how to set it up with the Raspberry Pi. So what is Octoprint and why might you want to use it? Well, Octoprint is a web interface for your 3D printer. It offers real-time feedback and remote control from your desktop, and you can even set up a camera to monitor your printer if it's in another room. Depending on your network configuration, you can also monitor your printer when you're away from home using your phone. For the Snapmaker, it also allows you to do a few extra things that you can't do through the default UI that may help to improve print quality while you're actually in the middle of printing, or they're just handy to have access to. Adjusting the speed and temperatures if you spot any issues mid-print, for example, or pausing mid-print to swap filament for another color. So what do we need to set up Octoprint on the Snapmaker? Well, first you need the Snapmaker, but Octoprint will actually run on anything that runs Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. We're gonna use a Raspberry Pi today because they're cheap to buy, they're inexpensive to run, and you don't hear them humming away like you do with a desktop or laptop. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, but this also works with the new Raspberry Pi 4 as well. This is just what I happen to have handy here. You also need a type A to type B USB cable. This is the same as those used with 2D printers. You'll need a type A to micro USB cable to power the Pi and maybe an HDMI cable. You'll also need a micro SD card. Now I'm using a SanDisk Extreme today and I also use the SanDisk Extreme Pro in a couple of other printers. It doesn't really matter which one you get. The important thing to look out for is the A2 class rating. This means it's designed specifically for a lot of reads and writes for things like an operating system on a Raspberry Pi. You'll also want a power supply that can deliver two to three amps depending on which Pi you use. Some of the Raspberry Pi kits come with a power supply, but if you're using your own, you'll wanna make sure it can supply enough current. You'll also need some kind of software to burn disk images out to the SD card. I use Win32 Disk Imager, but there are plenty of other ones out there. The process for setting it up is pretty simple. First, we go to the Octoprint website and we download Octopi, which is an image of Octoprint with an operating system and everything else you need that's specifically for the Raspberry Pi. Then you unzip this to a folder and you have a single file, which is your disk image. You put the micro SD card into your card reader on your computer, load Win32 Disk Imager and choose our file. You'll want to be very careful when you pick the drive letter that you tell Win32 Disk Imager or whatever software you're using to write to. As you can see here, it can also see my USB hard drives. And if I accidentally copy a disk image to that, then it's gonna wipe everything else that's on the disk. So find where you save the image file for Octoprint, hit write, double check the drive letter, and then hit okay and let it do its thing. And now you have an SD card with a bootable version of Linux and Octoprint already pre-installed. So now you can close Win32 Disk Imager, but you don't want to take the card out of the reader just yet. We need to edit a file called Octopi WPA Supplicant.txt on the root folder of the SD card. This allows us to set up our Wi-Fi so that we can log on to it and access Octoprint externally. All you need to do is to remove the hashtags at the beginning of the WPA2 section that comment out this part of the file and then enter your SSID password, save it out and close the file. Now you can pull the card out of your adapter and slot it into the Pi. Now we just need to plug in the cables. The first is the USB-A to USB-B cable. The B end plugs into the printer and the other end goes into the Pi. The micro USB cable supplies power to the Pi, but I haven't got the other end plugged into the power source yet. I'm also using an HDMI cable here just in case I need to troubleshoot, but this isn't really all that essential. Once we plug in the power to the Pi, all we need to do then is wait for a couple of minutes and then load a web browser on our desktop. You can usually enter the address octopi.local into your web browser, but if that doesn't work, well, this is why we have the HDMI cable. When the Pi boots up, it shows the IP address right there on the screen if you have a monitor plugged in. And if it doesn't show an IP, then you've messed something up in your Wi-Fi settings, so you need to go back and edit that file again. But assuming there's an IP shown on the screen, we can just enter that right into our browser and up comes the Octoprint interface. Now I don't need the HDMI cable anymore unless other problems come up in the future that mean I need to plug a monitor directly into the Pi. The first time we connect, we'll see the setup wizard. This is where we set our default settings for Octoprint. We click next, we see access control where we can set our username and password. This is the username and password you'll need to log into the Octoprint UI. 
Once you've entered a username and password, click Keep Access Control Enabled to make sure it's required to log in. Then hit Next. Anonymous usage tracking sends back anonymous information to the developers that helps them figure out how the software is being used, what works, what doesn't, so they can make Octoprint better in the future. I'd normally enable this and I have done on my other printers, but for now I'm going to disable this and I can always turn it on again later in the settings. On the next page, we see the online connectivity check. This allows the printer to check if it's online before trying to do anything that requires it to be online. I won't have this printer online all the time, but I will sometimes, so I'm setting it to check and make sure that it's online before it tries to download any updates or do anything that requires the internet. The plugin blacklist helps to prevent potentially malicious plugins from being installed on your Pi. It's an open source project and anybody can write whatever plugins they want for it. If you don't know how to read the code, you've no idea what they might be doing under the hood, so this prevents known abusive plugins from being installed. Finally, we get to our printer setup. I'm going to name it Snapmaker because we're using the Snapmaker, and I'm going to tell it that it's a Snapmaker as the printer model. Going over to the Print Bed and Build Volume tab, we can enter our bed settings. It's a rectangular bed, and the origin, where the bed homes to, is in the lower left corner of the bed. I have a heated bed, so I check that box, but I don't have a heated enclosure, so I leave that one unchecked. For print volume, I'll set the X and Y axes to 125 millimeters, and I'll leave the Z at 200 because I have the Z axis extension arm installed. If you're using the stock snap maker, you'll want to make sure this is set to 125 millimeters too. On the axes tab, the only thing I'm going to change here is the extruder feed rate. I'm going to knock it down to 100 millimeters per minute and leave the others as they are. In the hot end section, the nozzle diameter is already set to 0.4 millimeters, and if you're using the stock nozzle, then you'd leave it as it is. If you've changed it, enter the nozzle diameter that you're using here, and then click Next. Then click Finish, and the basic setup is done. Okay, right, we're not connected to a printer now, so we need to tell it to connect to the printer. I'm only ever going to be using this Pi setup with a Snapmaker, and I'll want it to connect to the Snapmaker whenever it's powered up, so I'm going to check the boxes to say save the connection, and connect on the startup, and then hit connect. The printer connects, and after a few seconds you can see the printer is sending back temperatures to Octoprint. You can see that there are several tabs along the top. Right now we're on the temperature tab, where we can see the temperature and set the temperature of the bed and the nozzle. The next one along is the control tab. This allows us to move the head around and if we have a camera connected to the Pi, see what the camera is seeing. This can be handy if you're monitoring from a room other than the one the printer's in. The G-code viewer lets us see our G-code visually as it's being printed, or we can use it before we print to scroll through the different layers and just give it a quick scan. The terminal lets us send G-code commands directly to the printer and see the responses the printer sends back. Again, if we have a camera hooked up, we can set it to shoot time-lapse on the time-lapse tab. I'm not going to get into this today, but this is something I plan to cover in a future video. Okay, we're all set up, so now what? How do we print? Well, this brings me to the main reason I wanted to connect the Snapmaker to Octoprint in the first place. I'm sick of constantly having to remove the USB stick, put it in the computer, copy the files, eject the stick, unplug the stick from the computer, and plug it back into the printer again, and then have to sift through the navigation to actually be able to print a model. With Octoprint, I can transfer files straight from my hard drive to the SD card in the Pi by dragging and dropping them into the browser. When I drag the file into the browser, you can see the screen darkens and splits into two halves with the dashed line down the middle. If we drop the file on the right half, the file gets saved to the memory stick plugged into the printer. I don't have one plugged in, so you can see it's not initialized. If we drag it to the left side, it gets saved to the SD card inside the Raspberry Pi itself. This is where I typically save them because then I can organize and store them inside folders as they start to build up. Once it's uploaded, if we click on it, Octoprint will queue it up as the next thing to print. If we head on over to the G-Code tab and wait a few seconds, it'll load the model into it and we can then look through all the layers of the print. If we go back to the temperature tab, you can see that we're able to set the temperatures for the bed and the nozzle ourselves. This means we can adjust the temperature of both while printing if we make a mistake in our slicer settings, or it means we can preheat them both before we start printing, as I'm doing here. When everything's up to temperature, I can just hit print and it starts going almost right away because everything's already up to temperature. You don't have to preheat, but it means that I can start printing exactly when I want to. So if I set the bed and the nozzle to warm up and then go make a coffee or go to the bathroom or something, I can make sure I'm back before it starts printing because it doesn't start until I actually tell it to. 
If I just start printing with a cold printer and then walk away, it could start printing before I'm back and then potentially start creating a big mess if I haven't leveled or cleaned the bed properly before I started it. You can see while we're printing too that the GCO viewer is updating while the print happens. This keeps updating throughout the print to show you the current status and where the print head is, which can be very handy when trying to fix printing errors in some files. But assuming everything is going okay, it's just a case of leaving it alone until it's done. You might question the sanity of installing Octoprint on a printer that's on the same desk as my computer, but for me it's about file organization and not having to deal with constantly unplugging and plugging in memory sticks. It's a lot less hassle if I'm tweaking and testing slicer settings to be able to delete a file and just upload a new one through the web. Or if I'm printing a thing made up of multiple things, I can make a folder for the main thing and put all the files for the individual things inside it. Octoprint isn't for everyone, but for me it makes life a lot simpler and provides features that I wouldn't otherwise have. I'll talk more about some of those in future videos, but for now I think I'll leave things there. No doubt some of you will have questions, so please feel free to drop those in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to know when I upload videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>